with Ryan Reese from Southern California. This is Live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1 564 6173, or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. All right. Tonight's show is going to be sick because I have two of my good friends in studio. Once again, Sean McKeon, you know him, and Scott Salaman. He's been on here a few times. Tonight, we are going to take questions from, um, from several high school students, right? Yep. So we, did, uh, we, we had uh, one of our friends go in and meet with uh, high school students, and they compiled a bunch of uh, questions together. So this is going to be great because we know that we tour high schools and we get in front of a lot of high school students. So this is for you guys. This show is for you today. So let's just start ripping through them and uh, see what we get. All right. First question is, what do you do if I cannot feel the Holy Spirit even though I'm still praying? Well, we don't obviously live by emotions um, or feelings. And don't get me wrong, it is amazing when you do pray and you have those Holy Spirit encounters. Mm. But it's like, it's almost, and I'm going to let you guys talk into this as well, but for me, my personal experience is that, first of all, God says He'll send the Holy Spirit when you, when you pray to receive Him. It's the indwelling. But then when you're worshiping or like when you're in church singing songs mm. or when you're in church service and words are being said or when you read the Bible, when there's, there's sometimes there's just things said and it's almost like, you get touched by the Holy Spirit. You can just like uh, encounter like a, you get kind of emotional, I guess, mm-hmm. would be one one effect of it. Or you get teary-eyed mm-hmm. or you just kind of encounter like a touch of love. It's like God just kind of, he, he, he touches you in in, uh, in this way through the Holy Spirit to let you know he's with you. And sometimes, uh, a lot of the times, it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Why? I don't know. I think God wants us to, to learn how to... Uh, to walk not on our feelings, um, and he's uh, sometimes he wants us to press in. Yeah, you know sometimes he's, he just wants you to keep pressing in, seek him, and you will find him. Knock and the door will be open. We use this verse a lot on here because it is true. I think as Christians sometimes we get we get distracted and we forget to seek him. And what does that look like? It's it's pressing in. It's reading the Bible. It's it's asking mm-hmm. him, God, show up. Because that's, that's, that's what he wants from us. He wants us to press into him. Yeah. You know, uh, scripture I love is uh, 2 Corinthians um, 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Um, so often it's so easy to walk by emotions and, you know, walk by feeling. And I, I believe God does, like you said. Like you're going to have those moments. Like maybe it's in a worship service. Maybe it's just at your home. Maybe it's just you, you praying. And, and God just touches you by spirit. Like, and you just you know, feel his presence, you are encouraged, God's love being showered over you. But there's also great lessons in silence. There's great lessons that God wants to teach you by just trusting by, by faith. And, you know, you're going to have those moments sometimes where things aren't clicking. I, I've said this often because some people don't like the, the wilderness times. They don't like the quiet times, but it's necessary. You kind of hit on it right there, Ryan. I believe it does stretch your faith. Mm-hmm. I really believe it does test your faith um, that it's solid. You know, God, look, look at the way Jesus dealt with people. He dealt with people differently often. The way he healed people sometimes is different. Sometimes it was putting mud in someone's face. Maybe sometimes it was just by a word. Um, and sometimes God will speak through a big catastrophe, a big earthquake, a big um, situation happens in your life. Sometimes he'll... He'll speak to you by, by silence. And I, I think that you have to be open to God's spirit and be um, just be an open vessel to him that you could truly hear God's voice. Um, I, I, it's the easy aspect is the feeling aspect. You know, that's what and sometimes people are always trying to search for a feeling over than just trusting the Lord by faith and being in his word, because the greatest way that God's going to speak to you is through his word. Um, the book of Hebrews, it talks about. Um, in times past, the Lord spoke to the prophets, um, but in these last days, has spoken to His Son. So, so I got two things I yep. want to add as you were talking, and then maybe Scott, you can talk about the next question. Um, people want, people are looking for this feeling, mm-hmm. right? I was at a conference this weekend with my friend Luke, and he was talking about how 
uh, his whole thing was he was just saying, you guys, you know, you, you got to press into the word. God speaks you through the word. He confirms because it was a, it was a, pro, it was a conference on uh, operating in the prophetic. Mm-hmm. And he's like, as you go into the word, that's what comes out through the prophetic. It's like mm-hmm. he's always pointing back to the word, to yeah. the word, to the word. People, he's like, some people just live by, by feelings and, and off of words. Like, I just go from one conference to the next conference, and I got to just get that word. Or, you know, right. just these feelings, feeling all fuzzy and excited, and then I got to go to the next conference. But no one ever is pressing into the word mm-hmm. and, and, and plugged into church and, and having that relationship. Yep. And then the second thing, you were talking about how God speaks in those quiet times. And I thought about that verse, uh, be still and know that I am God. Mm-hmm. Sometimes... I, man, re- actually, it's probably about a month ago. I was, I was, you know, kind of arguing with God. He wasn't saying nothing at the point. I was just kind of like, "What's up with this? What's up with this?" You know, like I wanted, I wanted something to happen. Mm-hmm. And sometimes some people want a feeling to happen, a touch from God. But I was w- arguing with God, like, "Well, how come these things haven't happened yet? You've already told me that they were happening." Mm-hmm. And I just heard Him say, "Be still and know that I'm God." Mm-hmm. Like, basically, just chill. Yeah. Like, what's he doing? He's at work. He's not, he, he doesn't sleep. Nope. You know, he's not, he's not like busy doing something else. He's everywhere. Mm-hmm. So just know that God is at work and he's working out his eternal plan and purpose in your life. Just keep pressing into the word. What's yep. the next question? Uh, what does the Bible say about doubting and learning how to use your faith? Hmm. Uh, James, James chapter one, I was talking about that today and I was just actually reading it this morning. He says, you know, um, let him who asks, ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For lo- let not that man uh, suppose that he would receive anything from the Lord. He is double minded man, unstable in all of his ways. So, if you, and, and again, it all talks about like, what are we doubting? Are we doubting God's word? Are we doubting our salvation? Are we doubting, you know? I don't know what this person is talking about, but I, I struggle with this in the sense of um, you get a promise from God, yep. and you're like, yes, I believe that. Yeah, I believe that's cool. It's mine. It's all. You claim that. You're believing on that. And then all of a sudden, something happens where you're like, Whoa, well, I thought you said this, Lord. And yep. it doesn't make you doubt God or doubt his word. It makes you think about like, okay, was maybe he was speaking to me about something else. God's word is God's word. It's always going to be fulfilled. Um, never doubt God, never doubt his word. Um, how do we know when he's fulfilling a promise to us? You know, he's very specific. Like you were praying for something specific probably. Mm -hmm. And when we don't see the results of that, uh, we, we can tend to doubt. But he says that being doubt, doubting God is like being tossed on the ocean, going back and forth, you know, and you're, you're never really knowing where you're going. You're losing bearings. So what I would say, if you don't get the answer that you're looking for, or you're doubting God, for a particular answered prayer, wait it out, Terry. Because the Bible says, whatever you ask in my name, it shall be given to you. Mm-hmm. But it's always in his timing and according to his will. Even Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, mm-hmm. So we need to pray according to the will of God. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're doubting your salvation, that's a different story. That's something that you need to get deeper in with God and, and get into his word to, to confirm mm-hmm. that your salvation is secure in Jesus Christ as we continue to abide in him, John 15, and all those kind of things. So My problem is not... Mm-hmm. Uh, doubting that God's going to fulfill mm-hmm. what He says—that's never. That's not. I, I. That's not my problem with God mm-hmm. at times. My problem is like, let's get it done. Mm. Like, come on, dude. What are you waiting for? Like, I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. But obviously, I'm not ready. Or we, God holds off on things because we're not ready to receive yeah. it at that time. And His timing is perfect. We're not. We're not ready to handle what He wants to do. Mm. Mm-hmm. In that moment, he's still he's still uh, preparing you. You know, when, when it comes to doubt, it's it's an area as Ryan was saying and kind of alluding to the first question too of of that faith being stretched. A doubt is a place where the enemy works big time in our lives, mm-hmm. um, all the way from in Genesis. You know, Satan you know caused Eve to doubt God's goodness, mm-hmm. which led to the great fall of men. Um, when you look at the Old Testament, there were um, uh, failures that they had, whether in battle, because it wasn't mixed with faith. God always wants to do works in our lives that where he gets all the glory and the honor. You go back to Gideon and the whole army. He's like, how are you going to use me? I'm weak. My tribe's the weakest. How am we going to go against the enemy? 
and then the Lord kind of steps it up. Okay, you have all these men. Now you're ready to go. Now I'm going to cut it all the way down. And he cut it all, all the way down to 300. So they would learn to trust the Lord and not and have faith and not doubt that God was going to provide. Right. When the disciples went through the storm after the feeding of the 5,000, where they saw a great miracle in their life, and they're going on the sea, and they're scared for their lives. And when Jesus is walking on water, makes the, the, the wave still, he says, oh, he says to, to Peter, when he goes down in the water after he walks, he says, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? Why did you not trust me? Mm -hmm. Literally, he was going to see them on the other side. They had to trust and believe it. Mm -hmm. um, doubt is somewhere where the enemy definitely wants to play games with your mind. As Ryan was saying, like, you feel like God's la lagging, you know, but God's always on time. Um, he's always, his, his goodness is always true, um, but Satan's always going to want us to doubt his provision and his goodness. He can't be late. Yeah. He's outside of time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're, the, we're, the ones that get, yeah, we're the ones that get impatient, not him. He's outside of time. He just, you know, he sees it all from, yeah. the, from the beginning to the end. He's, mm -hmm. he, he can't be late. We're all hey. guilty of that, though, of, of oh. doubting, like, oh, yeah. Nah. Yeah. You know, and I think because in our society, we don't like waiting for things. No. I hate waiting in drive throughs Have you heard of Instagram? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right now. Insta. Okay, hey, but yeah. while we talked about doubt, I do want to add one thing. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about fear. Because mm. fear and doubt, they work together. Mm. Right. Yeah. And it's the enemy, Satan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk about it. So what's, okay, so you're dealing with uh, fear, mm -hmm. or you're dealing with doubt. How can fear work in that same situation or, or they're they're like they're like twin brothers almost right yeah you know um more one, like fraternal twins yeah the, the the bible says do not fear often do not do yeah. not do not fear it's in the old testament often it's through the psalms yeah. um Deuteronomy, the bible tells Joshua, us to, yeah. to you said to be still and know that i am god fear as the bible says involves torment and what causes fear to leave perfect love casts out all fear it's, and what that means, what, G, what John is saying in First John is saying, when you understand God's goodness, when you understand his love for you, fear is going to go away. Mm. Doubt's going to go away. Mm. It's when we get our eyes focused on the issues and the problems, we get overwhelmed with our circumstances, mm. fear and everything's going to come. Mm. One thing, going back to that story with them, with Jesus walking on water, whenever I've taught that, I always say, it's at these moments, storms are going to come. How you react to it's mm. different. The disciples, how they reacted quickly, were, we're going to die, we're not going to make it, my life is over, don't, don't and there's you care. And if fear, yeah, no, it, do you, you, do you even care? Yeah. Um, and doubting and fear, we're not going to make it, and then here comes Christ walking on the water to mm -hmm. do what? To bring peace, assurance, His grace, His mercy, yeah. His peace that surpasses all understanding. <laughs> Who are you going to believe? What, what voice are you going to listen to? And they to? still thought He was a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Satan is the destroyer. Fear is to torment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just think about that together. Yep. So when you ha have all that, and obviously Satan works in the doubt situation because when you look at the garden, mm -hmm. he put doubt into Eve. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, God wants you to, you know, does God not want you to eat from this doubt? And then, oh, God, God doesn't want you to eat this because he, he wants you... He doesn't want you to be like God, mm. like himself. Fear. Mm. Oh, you know, he's, 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 he's placing all these things in their life. And that's his whole thing is he uses these things to get your eyes off of God and the truth to distract you and to confuse you. Yeah. You know, think about the Proverbs too, like in another practical mm. sense, it says, the fear of man is a snare. Because when you allow fear to like reign in your life you like get like nervous about like a person or a situation you get overwhelmed um and it brings a snare it hinders you in your life and that's what Satan mm -hmm. wants to do he wants to bring fear and doubt to hinder you from trusting in god getting overwhelmed by people or what are they gonna think or you know this might even come to a place of be communicating to somebody god's grace love mercy through the gospel yeah. and you feel fear like you don't want to you feel intimidated or whatever but again it's you got to understand that you you have the you have power, and that's what uh, Paul says to Timothy. God is not caused to fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. And God God gives life, love, hope, self discipline, forgiveness, forgiveness, all these things that are complete Grace, opposite mercy, yeah, all of what 
these two things. And that's how you can de decipher between the two, Satan and, and uh I like God. what you said. You said, um, you know, f the fear of man brings a snare. But what the very first proverb, he says, but the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. Yeah. You know, and I, I always think about, you know, you're talking about Adam and Eve and the deception bringing in the, the, the unbelief of Eve. What about the children of Israel? Like God already gave them the promises, told them what the rewards were, laid the land out in front of them, told them all you got to do is step over. Yeah. And what they do? Uh, okay, well, let's send in some spies. Yeah. And then they believed on the fearful. There's giants in the land. We're not going to fear. They never yeah. took it. They never Shut took it the down. Land. The fear they and the doubt. Yeah, they never took the land. Fear Shut will get down. you wanking around in a wilderness, mm -hmm. not learning the lessons, and going around like a hamster in, mm -hmm. in a cage where mm -hmm. you're just not going anywhere because you're not trusting. Trusting brings growth. Mm -hmm. Faith brings strength in your life. So you're not growing. You're, you're in not your Christian going, walk, you're and you're going in circles. Yeah, you're not going. Going not growing. or growing. Yep. Yep. All right, cool. What's the next question? How do you know if someone is the one? The one. How do you because know? Because you're going to be like, dang, <laughs> she's fine. No, that's not right. Well, that too. <laughs> how, how are you going to know she's the one, Scott? Um, how would you know, Scott? <laughs> well, <laughs> the one. The one, you know, and we have gotten in some crazy conversations about knowing the perfect will of God. Like, for instance, um, you get married. Have you heard these stories? A person gets married, they love each other, walking with the Lord, and five years later, one of them splits. Was that God's perfect will? Mm -hmm. You know, or was it? Because God will not work against human will. He wants your yeah. will to be aligned with His will. And yeah. when that happens, as you surrender your will to God, like you and Crystal, He aligns you with the with the like heart, like mind, and you and you are on the same page. So as you're both surrendered to the will of God, and you both commit to each other, that becomes God's will for your life. Like He's like, okay, I've got this person already chosen for you, but He says, but it's up to her will and His will to be both surrendered to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And thus, His will is fulfilled in both of their lives because He does not want man or woman to be alone. That's why He created one for the other. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that perfect will, I would say to this person, uh, most of all, A, does the person love God more than you? Yeah. B, are they going to lift you higher than themselves? That, those, are, those are two huge things. Do they care, A, about God first, love God more than you? B, are they going to lift the other, lift you more than they, they do some, than, than they do themselves? And are they willing to die to themselves? You know, are they willing to surrender whatever it takes to make it work and to, to work through the difficulties? Because you guys know marriage is, is difficult. And everyone says that marriage is easy. They've never been married or they're lying because it's, it's a battle every day. There are different struggles as you have two individuals that are completely different people and the two becoming one flesh is one thing. The, the physical side is one, but the mending together of personalities and differences is a completely different thing. And it, it takes a balance of the Holy Spirit. To and then you that. throw 57 kids in there. Well, besides yeah. the kids, that's a yeah. whole other situation. Yeah. But you're, you have to, now that you're, you're two, you have two mouths to feed, mm -hmm. you got clothes, you have all the, you know, your rent or mm -hmm. house Bills payment, just car, pressures of gas. life, yeah. Just, just that, just that. Ex dude, that's a that's a big overtake. Now you're the man. Now is responsible, yeah. to make sure all those ends meet for the whole household. Yeah, you know. And then you know, then then obviously when you get kids, that's more. Yeah, uh, bills and and then just just those kind of uh, uh, issues that arise. Challenges, so you, yeah. you, all that to say. Make sure that you marry the right one because marriage is amazing, mm -hmm. but it's also it's yes. more complicated. You know? you know, there's one challenge that no guy ever asks the girl like before they get married, and I think Sean and I have dealt with this. We talked about it before. Like, run his credit. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come up zero. No, it, it, what I was going to say was get your hands off my fries. Okay, get your own fries. <laughs> Don't touch my French fries. Yeah. Dude, that's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I, had a, I have a funny story. So, it never happened, but it was a, it was a good joke. So obviously, Crystal's parents, um, they're all in the car dealership, right? Mm -hmm. So her, her aunt, she, 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 you know, she's one of the, the big dogs over there. And she goes, Kurt, she goes, Crystal, any guy you meet, give me his name and I'll run his credit. <laughs> <laughs> that Dude, is the best. That's hilarious. <laughs> run his credit. Can you imagine you get married? All of a sudden you realize, oh, I've heard stories. Dude, literally, I've heard stories where... Someone got married. Mm -hmm. They got married, and the girl that the guy married had, he had no idea she was fifty something thousand dollars in debt yep. with credit card wow. for clothes. Mm -hmm. Not even like a car or anything that you you still have. 
just close. He oh, had no Lord idea, so he me. got married into debt. <sighs> Surprise! Sounds amazing. <laughs> Dude, that's harsh. Wow. Well. Yeah, so be careful, man. Maybe you need to run credit. You, credit check, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know, no, she's no, the one no, with the credit. No credit's cool, but you just don't want to be in debt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's but um, you know, and again, and you know, we take, we're just talking about this lightly, but these yeah. are these are like serious. Yeah, you gotta talk. These about are real stuff. like issues here. You gotta you yeah. gotta be very straight. You know that guy. This is the right one. And you also have to be very um, transparent, Honest, too. transparent. That, that's what this comes down yeah. to, this part. Yeah. Is you got to be very transparent and let the person know that you're married. And if you love them, that this is what's going on. And you know what? If you are in a little debt, you know, a lot of people are in debt. Let's yeah. just be real, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. I mean, I, I was in debt for many years. You know, I did, did some bad uh, things with credit cards. Not mm -hmm. bad things, but I just didn't pay them for yeah. a while. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't know they operated. And uh, <laughs> basically, um, what happens is you have to work on getting all that together but you have to be transparent and there's a way to get come out of this stuff you know for sure so be transparent and uh you know if god's for you it's all good yep. next question um what does christian dating and accountability look like hmm. go for it accountability accountability you're is, okay you well, said, first of all you yeah scott shut up you're yeah. a youth pastor yeah so you're, this is the question for you mm. Yeah. Well, you just hit it. The main thing is transparency. Um, accountability is like, let's say, because I deal with a lot of young leaders and whatnot, and, and I've had this in Explain my own life. what is accountability, what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, hey, um, I'm seeing this girl. I'm involved you know, in the church, and I'm seeing this girl, and I want you to know what kind of where we're at. And then I'll sit down and tell them, okay, if this is what you guys are going to do, make sure you guys are praying, you're reading, you're staying away from each other. After a certain time at night, don't be alone. Don't be and, alone in yeah, the bedroom don't be alone. in prayer meetings. Yes. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, and just making, setting standards or setting boundaries for yourself yeah. that you don't, you want to jump over because you do that and then you start getting into issues. Yeah. And accountability is just being, like you said, just being transparent, just saying, hey, this is where I struggle. And telling her too, like, hey, if, you know, just holding a girl's hand is going to get you crazy, don't hold her hand. And you got to be straight with that. You know, if, if her, like, putting her arm around, or you putting your arm around her makes her mind go different places, then you guys got to say, hey, maybe we need to just, like, keep it chill until, you know what I'm saying? Because there are a lot of people that are like that. I mean, yeah. it depends on your background. You have to be you honest know? with yourself yeah, in the like, sense of no, yeah. you, the boundaries, the boundaries are really for you to know. For both of what, you, yeah. Well, it's for both of you, but I'm saying, like, if you just take it personally, yeah, say, honestly, I got to be honest with myself if I want to do things right Yeah. before God, like, what? What will make me lose my mind? Yeah, and and what what, what boundaries are set up so I can yeah. do this right? Like put on this. It's, it's just an honest yeah. question, right? Yeah, exactly. You don't uh, have to lie to anyone, but you're only lying to yourself, basically. Yeah. basically. So no, it's just it's it's communication, transparency, right. and, and knowing your limits and, and keeping those limits. Basically, yeah. I would say exactly. spiritually. All right, that's good. All right. Um, how do you know if your dreams are from the Lord or not? Mm, how do you know ones. if your dreams are from the Lord? Okay. I like this. Uh, this we, we're going to talk about this. Yeah. I want to kind of do a little opener for this. So there's there's a lot of uh, people that get uh, satanic dreams. Mm. I've had some. Mm -hmm. And ones that I've had, there's Gnarly. nothing godly about them. Because right. yeah. when they come from the enemy, yeah. they are dark. Yeah. They are literally filthy. They could be pornographic. They could just be dark evil fear all that stuff included and something from the lord is going to be the the complete opposite because we talked about the difference between the two that's all i'm going to say mm. um so when you look at dreams you know can dreams have a message mm -hmm. well if you look at the bible there are many instances especially with joseph joseph had the ability to interpret dreams they, they had a message to them um, also, when you look at Daniel, mm -hmm. Daniel had the ability to break down dreams. Uh, the, the Bible talks about um, in the book of Joel as, as far as God speaking you know, through dreams. Last now, days, do all yeah. dreams have a message? The answer is no. Are there messages sometimes in dreams? That there are. I think you can major on things in the wrong way. I think people can get <laughs> let their fa their fantasy world like go to over overdrive, right, 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 over spiritualize sure. everything. I think it's one of those things where you really have to 
if it's a, a, a gnarly impression that God's laid upon your heart, maybe the next day, it has some kind of biblical thing, or it's like preparing you for something in, in, in the future, mm -hmm. I think you take those things to prayer and like, Lord, are you trying to speak to me through this? Just as you would, Lord, are you trying to speak to me through this circumstance in my life? Right. I believe that there, the, the way that God speaks will be backed up by his word. Amen to that. So yeah. nothing's going to contradict overall God's word from Genesis to Revelation, all it's going to do is going to amplify something. It's going to give you um, maybe insight to something, maybe something that you've been praying about and God speaks to you through it. Um, but I think all those things you have to test. I think, I know for, for Scott, there's been those times in our lives that we've had something. And I know for you, you've said like, man, maybe God's starting to show this to you or speak yeah. to you through this aspect yeah. as far as an interpretation of a dream. Yeah, I, and you know, the Bible does say uh, of the 21 gifts of the Spirit, there's dreams and interpretation of dreams. And I, and I kind of feel like God has kind of given me some insight in that one area. And I didn't know it for a long time. When somebody say, dude, I had this crazy dream, and as they began to say what the dream was, God would tell me right off the bat, this is what it means. Mm -hmm. If it meant nothing, I'd be like, dude, you, you had too many tacos the night yeah. before. But, so I feel like God would give me, like, and, and the understanding is super simple. Like, he would, they would tell me, I'm like, oh, well, it means this. And like, wow. And to them, it's like revelation. To me, it's yeah. like, like God just told me this is what it means. Yeah. But I will say this about dreams, because I just got a phone call yesterday, and a woman was like, the Lord told me in a dream, the Lord told me in a dream. Dreams are cool, but remember that signs and wonders and dreams are mostly for the non-believer. Mm -hmm. now, now, men and women will have dreams. Young men, old men will have dreams in the last days. And I think there will be more prophetic dreams like this is what's coming. The Lord's coming back. Mm -hmm. Some people take every single dream as it's from the Lord, and they, and they try to read into it, like you said, over-spiritualize it. But that's not always the case. If it's not backed up with God's Word, He's going to speak to you through the Word first. Always the Word first. Always the Word second. And then if you're not paying attention, then you might get a dream. You know what I'm saying? But usually it comes from, he'll, he'll back it up in the Word almost always. You get a dream, and there'll be a scripture or something referencing it, like, okay, like like Daniel's. And yeah. then you can back it up and go, okay, this is what I kind of think it, it, what the Lord's trying to speak to me about. Now, interpreting your own dreams, sometimes you can't. Like, I've had dreams, and I know exactly what they meant. I had a reoccurring dream for years. Um, and I'll tell you what they were. They were, um, I was literally um, swept up on a beach and three huge waves Three huge waves would wipe me out and leave me wasted on these rocks. As I'm being wasted on the rocks, uh, three huge bears come up and attack me, one after another. Three bears, three waves. And the Lord told me what it was. There are going to be three huge things in my life that were going to leave me almost dead. And um, there are going to be three huge trials, three huge difficulties, whatever. And I could say for sure that I'd say two of those I know for sure have passed. Um, what the a third would be, I don't know. I don't want to know. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Lord has given me insight. Like those, they're, they're three big, life-changing experiences that that you're going to experience. And um, um, they, they, one of them is death, not physically, maybe like spiritually. That like He recreates me or re, 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 makes me reborn again. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. but I do know that those three things talk about like a big testing or a big trial, big difficulty. So I, yeah, He spoke to me about that very clearly. So. Um, sometimes dreams are just to give you insight on someone's yeah. life to pray for them. Yeah. Or yeah. like, I mean, I know Crystal, she had a dream one time for one of her friends. Like It was like a couple months out. And she's like, yeah, I had a dream. They had a boy. Hmm. She had a boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, I think it, it, it's a balance with everything. I'm somebody, so ever since I was a young kid, I've dreamed. I, I almost dream every day every night it's just been something my, my whole life some vivid things some crazy ones i would not want to see his dreams <laughs> yeah i've had some crazy ones my, yeah. my whole life i've just always been like that always been able to kind of remember them uh the well, next day you've been day. on drugs half your life so I that, that, that is true <laughs> a lot of medication <laughs> yeah a lot of medication, <laughs> yeah, just lot of medication. but like so, like so i said dream a lot. there are things like that right like yeah. where it's like you know you it wakes you up and you're like man like i gotta pray for this person why am i yeah. thinking about this person and yeah sometimes those things can be how can I tell when God is speaking to me versus me just thinking it? Oh, God's voice. It's like a, yeah. it's like a whisper. It's like a faint whisper. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you have to tune yourself to hear. 
And I would, I, you know, this is this is actually kind of where I'm at in my life right now is I'm trying to increase my, my, my tuning. We're going to be going to break right now for two minutes. For all you guys that are listening, go to the Whosoever's app, download it. It's free. It has all the past radio shows you could catch. Get that and much more. And then don't forget that we're going to be doing a men's conference at the Anaheim Convention Center. It's going to be with uh, Franklin Graham, Jeff Johnson, John Randall, myself, Jack Hibbs, and many more. The date is going to be Saturday, November 9th at 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Come one, come all. More live with Ryan Race coming up. Is everything all right? Sure. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say whoop de doo Back to live with Ryan Reese. Don't say we didn't warn you. Loud noises! How can I tell when God is speaking to me versus me just thinking it? Oh, God's voice. It's like a yeah. it's like a whisper. It's like a faint whisper. Mm-hmm. And that's something that you have to tune yourself to hear. And I would I you know, this is this is actually kind of where I'm at in my life right now, is I'm trying to increase my my, my tuning of ear. So I want to talk about this a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, you hear it. You could hear it audibly, but it definitely sounds like when I first heard God's voice was when I first got saved. I gave my life to Jesus. I woke up the next day and I heard. I woke up to hearing, "This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it." And it kept saying over and over. But that wasn't like a faint whisper. But it wasn't as loud as like a human voice. Like I'm here. Yeah. But it was, it, it, but it was like something in between. You know what I mean? But I could hear it, and it was just over and over and over. I mean, it was, it was, it was just in my head. You know, I could hear it. But then, it turned into more of like a faint kind of, like a like a nudge, like a prompting. Mm. But then I could hear like a little whisper sometimes. Mm. And the way how I know it's God, this is how I know it's God, is before I get done asking the question, He answers it. It's mm. so fast. That he just answers it. I'll be asking him a question. Hey God, what? like the other day I was I was driving. I talked to you about it, Sean. Mm-hmm. Is uh, I was driving down the street and I was like, I was like, God, you know, like what what are we doing? What's next? What are we gonna do? And I heard him immediately say, Going big. Mm-hmm. And let me explain something. God speaks to us in our language, like as a friend. He's not gonna talk to you in old English. <laughs> you know, he doesn't talk in different dialects. Like to you, he's gonna to talk to you as a friend, and the way you you speak to your friends. 
So I said, God, what are we doing next? And he's like, going big. And I'm like, okay, when? He goes, now. That was, that was a conversation. Well, 10 minutes after, I'm like, cool, let's go, you know? And I'm driving. 10 minutes later, I get a text message. And it was from actually uh, the radio show that we're on, um, uh, Mike Kessler. Uh, he's the owner of uh, the um, FX Radio. We're on, this, we're on the station. It's a music station. And, and basically his text says, hey, we want to put your show on the air. That was it. Ten, ten minutes after. So I go, God, what do you want to do today? What are we going to do? We're going big. When? Now. Cool. Let's do it. Ten minutes later, boom, I get a text. We want to put your show on. Well, that's big. His, his network of the FX radio, that's uh, 59 stations wow. we're on. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's big in 26 states. <laughs> and that was in 10 minutes. Think what God can do with like a lifetime of prayer. Just like, you know? Yeah. Amazing. You know, it's funny. Is I have a quote that basically says in my, in my phone, it says, what, you, what, what God can do in, in, in 20 minutes is more than you can do in your lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Many lifetimes. I, I, I thought about that quote after this happened, mm. and I just put, put it in my Instagram or on my, my notes so I can look over it. That's funny. So God's voice, mm. he, he speaks to you. Yep. Um, I was praying in a cave one time. I, I went hiking, and I would go to this cave, and I would, I would talk to God where I could be quiet. That's also the key to hearing God's voice. You got to turn your phone off, go on airplane mode. Don't be listening to music. You got to be in a place where you could hear that faint whisper. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in the cave, and I said, I asked him a question: Is this person blah blank 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 blank? And I just heard him say no, no. I'm like, okay. Then I asked him another question: What about this person? Blank 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 blank. No. That was it. I called Sean when I was driving home. I said, Sean, God spoke to me about this person, and he said no about this person. He said no about this person. Well, a couple weeks later, those no's were exactly what happened with these two people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it wasn't a loud voice. What, what was I doing? Uh, first, first off, I was in my car driving for the first one. No music, nothing, talking to God and listening. Then the second thing was I was in a cave after walking on a, in a trail walk. I was in a cave and there was no sound. And I was, uh, I was, um, had no phone. I had no ear, no earphones in, nothing. I was just sitting there asking questions, listening. Mm. And it's that small faint. Okay. Yesterday this happened. So I'm, 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 uh, I'm in a, I'm in a place where they, you know, they do, they draw blood, right? One of those like quest, yeah. quest, quest, whatever. And I'm, I'm walking, I'm in my cubicle. It's about to go down. And, and I, he, and I hear this girl in the next one talking, saying that she takes chemo pills. Hmm. And I'm like, and, and all of a sudden, like, I just feel this prompting, like pray for her. Now this one wasn't like an audible. It wasn't that whisper. It was just like this faith came over me and it was just like, pray for her. It was like a, an impression. That's mm -hmm. also the way God speaks. He gives mm -hmm. you like impressions. Like you just feel it inside of you. So as she starts walking by, I just step out of my cubicle and I go, hey, did you just say you take pills for chemo? And she says, yes. And I said, can I pray for you? Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh my gosh, yes, please. Mm -hmm. She goes, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. Yes, please pray for me. And I asked her, how old is she? She goes, 19. She goes, I've had cancer 10 times. Mm. It just keeps coming back and forth. She's 19 years old. So I just stepped out by faith and I just prayed for it. And then the girl that was actually drawing the blood goes, I'm getting in on this prayer. It turns out she's a Christian. Wow. So she, we all, we get there. We're just praying in the middle of this, this blood bank and I pray for them. And then I, that's it. Love you. Yeah. Bye. And I sat back down. Mm. It was like this, this prompting. Yeah. And I just, dude, There's that's so risky. Yeah. But I just felt like God go. And I just stepped out by faith. And she's like, like, it was like this big sigh of relief. Like, yes. Yeah. Thank you. It's you, awesome. Amazing. Yeah, you heard your dad tell that story about when he was in Israel and the, the Lord told him to go, or it was South America, and God told him to go ride, walk up to a guy that was crippled and tell him, get up and walk. Yeah. But he was like, I ain't going to do that because if you don't get him, why? I'm going to look stupid, right? Yeah. And, he, and to this day, he, he totally beats himself up about it. Like, he, he knows that God was telling him to do it. Uh -huh. So sometimes God does promise. He, he speaks, I think God speaks in many ways. He speaks primarily through his word. Mm. Uh, sometimes he will he will, he will literally speak to me like I'm praying about something, and he'll bring a verse. Mm. He'll bring a verse that's just so strong. You're like, dude, and then I'll go look it up. I'm like, yeah, that's what he's telling me to do. Yeah. You know, or I'll hear it all in the study, and I'll hear it that day, and then I'll hear it two more times. I'm like, 
testimony three more, you know, like he'll, he'll just continue yeah. to confirm it. And then I'll be like, all right, I know what I need to do. Other times he's silent for a while. He doesn't always answer me right away. He makes me wait sometimes. I'm like, oh, that's when I get impatient, like, Lord. And that's when, that's when that fear and that doubt comes in because you're wondering, is he going to answer? He's always going to answer, but it's going to be his timing. So um, it, will the answer come? Absolutely. Do they always come right away? Sometimes and sometimes. It depends on the situation. Remember when uh, I was thinking of the Old Testament when he kept asking God about, um, you know, should I go down to battle or should I go not down to battle? And he went and, he, he, and then God finally spoke to him. He says, you go. And he went down, he got victory, you know, and um, I look about those times. It, it wasn't instantaneous. He went up, he, you know, and then God spoke to him. So I think it all varies and it depends on the situation. If you need it now, God's going to answer now. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, he wants to produce something you need to make you work, learn patience. He's going to hold it off a little bit and make you tarry and wait for it. Mm -hmm. God's good that way. He knows the perfect timing. So I, I want to I talk about another story of how God works because there's the, there's the fear. Mm hmm uh, there's the doubt. Mm -hmm. Was that God's voice? Mm -hmm. You hear audibly, and then you feel the prompting mm -hmm. of, of that. Another scenario is this actually happened two days ago. Actually, the day before the blood bank, um, I was we were getting. Um, I was going to go to this conference, and then in the morning, but I had to take the kids to, to the to the to the dentist or <coughs> hospital or something, and uh, I couldn't make the I couldn't make the conference in time. So my wife's like, "Hey, why don't you?" Uh, Let's go get pancakes. And I'm like, heck yeah, pancakes. Like, who turns down pancakes, right? <laughs> I can, I can yeah. pray any pancake. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, like, so number one, God, I think God used the go get the pancake thing to, to cause I was gonna go to the conference, but I would have been late mm -hmm. for the morning session. And I was like, pancake, I'm there. Let's go. You know, like, I can't turn it down. So we go there, we show up, we sit down, this guy comes up and he, he starts. He comes up and, you know, he's a really nice guy, kind of really outgoing guy, and waiter, like, what's up, man? And I'm like, oh, cool, man. Like your vibe, dude. You're like, you're on it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what's your name? He's all Ryan. And I'm like, oh, hey, my name's Ryan. Cool. So we start, you know, we, we connect, you know, and, and we, you know, he brings us all of our food. And, and then at the end, he was, this guy was such a great waiter that my wife's like, she's like, hey, you like, you know, over tip him. Like, he, he did a great job. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. So then I'm thinking, so I'm like, yeah, man. And, and, but meanwhile, like this guy's coming back and forth. God's prompting me, like he's highlighting him to mm. me. Like yeah. basically like, this is what he's going on. I don't know what's going well, I, I don't know what's going on with this guy, but, but God's prompting me like the, I'm not hearing audibly, I'm not hearing the whisper at first, but I'm just feeling prompted. Mm. I feel prompted to, uh, to speak to him. And now when because a lot of people go, well, is God speaking to me? Is this God or not? Well, why in the heck would you just want to talk to a random stranger? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's God prompting you. Mm -hmm. God, that's how you know God's already working because all of a sudden you have a desire to engage and share the gospel with this guy or to even, the only reason why I want to talk to the guy, this guy is to, to tell him about Jesus. So now I'm trying to figure out, you know, why, how I'm going to have this, this, this ground where I could actually even open up a conversation with him, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm asking the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm sitting there saying, God, open the door for me to, uh, to, to, to talk to this guy or whatever. And I'm like, so, and I'm trying to find this guy. He's going back and forth. And anyway, I just feel this impression to like tip him more. Mm -hmm. Now, God is always working supernaturally in the natural realm. Mm -hmm. Now, why am I going to even tip him more? But I felt like I didn't. I didn't know it was God at the time. But he was. He was already doing the work. Going basically, he's just prompting me. Just tip him more, yeah. Because it's he's worked supernaturally in the natural realm. So me just tipping him is just natural, right? Mm -hmm. So I tip him more. I give him an extra like three bucks on top of the extra tip. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, okay, God, if this is of you, the doubt comes in, mm -hmm. the fear comes in, yeah. fill the fleece out, yeah. right? Yeah. Dad or God, if this is of you. Then bring him to me so I could find him. So I got up to go to the bathroom so I could find him because he's in the back. I'm like looking for him to, to talk to him, to engage with him. I can't find him in the restaurant. So I go to the restroom. I come back. I'm like, whatever, God, I guess this wasn't you, but I felt like you're prompting me to do it. So I leave. We put all the kids inside of the car. And as the, all the kids are getting buckled in, all of a sudden the door comes flying open on the side of the restaurant. It's actually the back of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, Ryan, thanks for tipping me. Thanks, thanks for hooking me up. And I'm like, hold on. And I walk over. Thank God it happened then because the kids, it's nap time. Yeah. So they're already locked. They're already, you know, buckled in the car. So they're like secured. Mm -hmm. My wife's in there. 
And I walk up and I'm like, hey man. And I go, hey, no problem. Let me start talking. And I start talking to him. And honestly, I can't even remember exactly what I was. Oh, I go, this is the, my line. Hey man, do you go to church? He's all, no, why? I'm all, I don't know, man. It just, there's just something about you, you know? Like, I, I honestly felt like there's just something like spiritual about him. Yeah. Well, it turns out like he's in a new age and he's into uh, energy and yeah. he's into spirituality. Yeah. So we just start talking. And anyway, very long story short, I, I basically tell me, you know, like, hey, dude, you know, you're a sinner, right? Because the conversation and stuff he's in, and he starts laughing. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, man, you wouldn't even believe this weekend that I, you know, what happened this weekend, where I was at. And anyway, long story short, I just said, dude, I'm a sinner too, man, but I'm saved by, by, by grace and I explained who Jesus was. And he's like, I'm a Catholic. I grew up Catholic and ugh, I don't want nothing to do with that. I'm like, dude, forget all that. It's all religion. And mm -hmm. if you've ever, anyone's ever misrepresented who God is or through Christianity or religion or anything, I go, I, I want you to just not even think about that. Just, just dismiss everything you've ever learned about religion. I go, this is what I want to talk to you about, who Jesus was and what he did and what his character. And as I explained it all, I said, dude, I said, I know you want, I know you like energy and all that. I go, I'm going to introduce you to the real energy. It's the power from heaven. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Spirit. I go, do you want to, you want to encounter the, 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 the peace of God and actually the presence of God right now, the power from heaven? He's like, yeah, why not? I'm like, okay. <laughs> Boom, I led him to the Lord right wow. there on the side of his restaurant, That's in it. the back of his restaurant. That, and you thought you were just going for pancakes. I, I thought I was just I, and I got pancakes <laughs> on top of it. Double blessing. And and, and tons of bacon. And tons so, of bacon. So yeah. the deal is triple blessing. While we're how we're talking about God's voice mm, prompting yeah. is it was it wasn't I didn't hear audibly mm -hmm. in that situation. I felt yeah. prompted to talk to him. I felt prompted that there was like, I just felt something. There was something about him right, right. that was drawing me to him to have a to to, yeah. to talk to him about God, and then I felt prompted. Well, God prompted my wife to tip more, mm. and then God prompted me to yeah. tip more, and it's all because <laughs> God prompted my. It started with my wife prompted her to just tip more. Yeah, can you imagine if you're like, nah, we're broke. I don't want to give any more, and you would, that would have been a closed door. Yeah, you, you know what's but, you also know, awesome about that is how you feel afterwards, because then you know, like, I, I heard God's voice. Yeah, you've yeah. had those moments, you know, things that you would miss out on uh -huh. if you're not being sensitive to His voice. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've seen that often over the <clears throat> years of just like where God has that prompting, He's leading you somewhere. You might feel that doubt or fear, but when you go through with it or you totally. walk through that totally. door. What God does in your life, that's why like when the Bible, when, not when the Bible, when people encourage you and you're growing in your relationship with God, they say, pray, read the Bible, go to a church to teach the word of God, but also to share your faith or activate your faith or be used by God because mm -hmm. it all works complementary to one another. You're like, wow, God is real. God can use me just like he uses people in the Bible. And then Very simple. And then it just starts happening all yeah. the time. That's the one thing that I've, I'm in a season right now where... I'm asking for increase in my life, of increase of faith, increase of uh, so I could step out by by faith, increase of when we lay hands on people that they'll be healed. I'm like God, give me words, give me word of knowledge, word of prophecy, give me pictures, give me dreams, give me visions, give me anything. These are the these are the gifts. These are like the tools that God gives us <clears throat> to go out. And he commissioned us to pray for the sick. He, he's given us the great commission to go out and bring the gospel. And like you were saying earlier, mm -hmm. Scott, mm -hmm. you were saying that the signs and wonders are, are to lead people to the Lord. They're That's obviously it. for the believers. I yeah. prayed for Christians to be healed and they yeah, got healed. Absolutely. But, but when I, what I've noticed, though, is the, the signs and wonders, they happen a lot in Christian uh, with, in the non-believer realm. That's it. Yeah. Like when you pray for people to get healed, I, the, the, the majority of non-Christians, when we pray for them, I see them getting healed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, and then what does it do? It's like, okay, well, Jesus is real. Do you want to receive him? Yeah. Okay. Let me pray for you. Yeah. So that's how that whole, uh, I, tri I trip out on that. On the, you were just mentioning something that spawned the prompting along the line. Um, you know, we do different events, uh, missions, trips, uh, youth retreats and different things like that. And sometimes the Lord will just put somebody on my head. Mm -hmm. Hey, tell that person to go. Like whether they be a leader or a kid, they ain't got any money. And the Lord tells you they need to go. Yeah. And they go, and then all of a sudden on this trip, they're like pouring out, like, dude, like something traumatic happened to me like five years ago, yeah. and I would have never come on a trip like this. Yeah. And then the Lord touches them, and they, mm -hmm. it's crazy. And like you just being obedient to God mm -hmm. in those things, and just God does crazy cool stuff. So, so okay, to take away, um, there's prompting, mm -hmm. God highlights people, mm -hmm. 
And that, by the way, that girl that I prayed for, yeah. dude, when I was in the lobby downstairs, she came walking by and like, I just saw her and I was just like, I don't know, I was just looking at her. And then I go upstairs, and then she's in the she's in the dressing room, not dressing room. She's in the lobby of the 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 the, the yeah. blood work thing, the cubicle, yeah, cubicle. No, she no, she was in the lobby. Oh, okay. And then I'm like, hmm, interesting. I see her again. Mm-hmm. Then I'm sitting there in the different cubicle. And then I hear I hear the the speaking of it, and then she walks by, and it's her. Mm-hmm. So God was like highlighting, mm-hmm. like you know, like why do I, why do I keep seeing this 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 person? Yeah, He highlights, and that's like same thing with that girl or the guy. Every time I'd see him, it's just, I'd see him and I'm like, why do I want to talk to him? Like, you know, like God starts highlighting, then he prompts you, mm-hmm. he, he nudges you to go, something inside you, and then you have uh, the whisper. You have yeah. the whisper. Yeah. The leading of the spirit, like you said. That the voice. Yeah. And then obviously he speaks through the voice. His voice is the word of God. Yeah. Yep. And then he speaks, he also speaks through worship, mm-hmm. through lyrics. Do pastors speaking, teaching? That's why you go to church. The mm-hmm. prophetic word, yeah. Yeah, he, 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 uh, he yeah. So those are those are the ways. Uh, yeah. That was good. Oh, you guys want to take another question? Oh, we want to take questions. Yes. All right. That's why we're here. We're not here for a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> why Have do you seen his beard? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why do Christians go through condemnation? That's a good one. Um, you do tons of candles for you guys. Go for it. Condemnation. Um, let's let's break down the, the difference between condemnation and conviction. I think that's a good way to start. Number one, in Romans 8.1, it says, Therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Here's the condition. Who walk according to, do not walk in the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Big difference. When you walk yeah. in the flesh... When you are continuing to sin and you're living in the flesh, condemnation is going to overwhelm you. Um, conviction. And so what, what does condemnation want to do? Condemnation is this guilt, this shame, this dirtiness that you feel when maybe you've made a mistake or you're living in sin. Condemnation, it's judgment. And condemnation, how the enemy wants to use it in your life, is to draw you away from God. You don't want to read. You don't want to pray. You don't want to go to anybody that's an influence of your life because you are just being, you know, ridiculed by the enemy. You don't feel like you could be forgiven. Conviction is different. Conviction draws you to the Lord. It recognizes you recognize your own weakness and how your need for God. So that's the biggest thing. Condemnation draws you away from the Lord. It makes you focus on your issues, your problems. Conviction brings you closer to the Lord. Man, I blew it. I, I messed up. I got a lot of issues. Mm-hmm. And then the Lord is able to d- draw you back. Yeah. Um, condemnation, a lot of people battle with because um, the enemy plays mind games with us. I, I know we dealt with it. Mm-hmm. We've seen people d- dealt with it. And that's why it's so important. You know, David says, encourage yourself in the Lord. You got to encourage yourself with the Lord. The Lord wants to bring this guilt. I mean, the, the enemy wants to bring guilt and shame in your life. The Lord is able to redeem, to restore that which is broken. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and this is totally the Lord that this topic came up and we've talked yeah. about. It. We have time for one more. Yeah, let's do one more. All right. My home life is very toxic. My mom is mm. very aggressive and can get abusive at times. Mm. I've lost hope that she can change. How do I continue to pray for someone when I feel like I should just give up? Hmm. That's a good question, well, and, we, and we deal with that a lot. You take it. Yeah, I'll, I'll start it off. Um, yeah, I deal with young people a lot where they live in a home, where, and, th- and this is where it comes. There's frustration at home because maybe one of the one of the uh, the spouses is gone, or they're they're having problems in their marriage, or whatever. And uh, I've heard I've heard parents tell their kids this: "You spend too much time at the church." Or you're too involved with that youth group. And I'm looking at them like, really? Would you rather have your kids strung out on heroin and like, you know, going out there and sleeping around rather than be at the church? But what it is is they're attacking because it brings condemnation or I should say conviction to their life because they see the light. You know, they see like this kid's trying to do right. And you know that they that old saying that misery loves company and they just want to tear them down. So what I share with people like that, they're dealing with they got to go home. And we've had I have kids here that they don't want to go home. The service is over at 7 30, 8 o'clock. And they're like, hey, is anybody going to get going out to eat? Because they just want to, they don't want to go home. They want to go home, yeah. And so I, I just tell them, hey, man, look, before you step foot in your house, you pray. You sit in your driveway and you pray. 
And if they come at you, then you just like don't say a word, you know, and, and don't don't give them ammunition to come at you. You know, like if they ask you to do something, do it. Now, if they're being physically abusive, that's a different situation. And, and, and that that calls for different measures. Like, you know, you might mind to find a place to stay yeah. somewhere else or call the authorities or whatever. But we're talking just like oppression, just like anger and frustration and yelling and screaming. Diffuse it. You know, the Bible says, like, basically, like, you know, like, before a fire starts, you know, a lay contention. In other words, don't don't add to the fire. And so if there's anything you can do, I think prayer disarms people more than anything. You go in the spirit and you say, God, I don't know what's dealing with this, this person dealing with right now. I don't know why they're so antagonistic towards me. I don't know why they're so mad. Give me understanding. Give me wisdom. Give me sensitivity. And help me to love them even though they're hating on me right now. And I think those are the kind of things where Jesus talked about, like, if your enemies... Pray for your enemies. You know, yeah. pray for those who spitefully use you and, and, and abuse you. Yeah. And I think that's where that comes into play personally. So, All right. Well, that pretty much wraps up our show. Hmm. Um, any last thoughts on what you would like to say to the listeners before we close? No, I just, I just love going through all these questions. So hmm. continue having them come through. I think your questions can spark a lot of great conversations that can impact other people that are going to be listening to these shows. So make sure you just send them through. Yeah, this mm. is actually very epic. You should continue to get questions. Yeah, for sure. Every week. Because any anything's good. I mm -hmm. mean I mean I'm gonna start pulling from the public schools when we go weekly and see what they come oh, up with. Oh yeah. There's a lot of Dude, craziness. Please. There. Yeah. Because these these are great conversations and uh, it's also awesome because you could tell those those students like, hey, go in and download the show. It's mm -hmm. just gonna be airing this week. They can mm -hmm. watch it and they can get those questions answered. And then obviously there's other questions that they're gonna What's that number they can text that questions to again? There's a good one right there. Call. I have. Right I'll, there. I'll give it to you after. Yeah. That, that's a different number. Okay. Do you have that? Do you have the uh, text? I have the one from the high school. Is that the same one? Yeah, we could use that. Put one. it out. Same one. Yeah. Put it in the show. I think. I, I Pop think it I in the show. Too. While you do yeah. that, I'm going to plug the whosoevers .com. We are. Go to the website. Book us. We are touring. We are back on tour. Uh, we're touring the world with the Kill the Noise tour. We're bringing the gospel to the public schools. And, uh, you know, this last year we went to 98 schools. I'm praying that God will give us 200 schools this year. Uh, we went to Australia. We went to Colombia, Mexico, mm -hmm. Toronto, all across the United States. We were in another country. I can't think of it. But um, we were actually supposed to be in Hong Kong this month, but the riots broke out. Oh, wow. mm. So we, uh, we're in the process of going to Ecuador, Brazil, possibly, Chile. Possibly Chile, yeah. Possibly, possibly Chile's Chile. on the radar. Russia, I just got an email from wow. Russia. Wait, last, last time I went to yeah. Russia, I got shanked by a knife. <laughs> See that scar right here? We got in a fight. We were drunk. Uh, and I wasn't a Christian at that time, and I got uh, the guy tried stabbing me in my face. I blocked it. It sliced me here, and then blocked it and sliced me here. And uh, no, like Mother Russia. I'll go back. I'm down. I've been there three times. I ain't scarred. No, I ain't scarred. What's the worst that could happen? I can get shanked again. You get killed. I don't want to kill another one. All right. Well, cool. Uh, hit us up. What's that number? So it's 909-294-8714. 909-294-8714. Shoot a text to that number with your questions, and we will get on it. We love you guys, and, uh, yeah, we'll be talking um, – next Saturday. Peace. 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 This has been Live with Ryan Reese. To connect or find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.